very good afternoon children well in today's class of english literature we shall take a new chapter from your skylark course book and the name of the lesson is the uncomfortable bed now this story the uncomfortable bed is a short story written by guy de maupassant okay the author is a french and his name is pronounced as guy de maupassant Now he wrote this story in the year 1883. All right. Now you know uh, when the story begins. Now our uh, our narrator Guy de Maupassant. One autumn, what did he decide? He decided to stay for a hunting season with some of his friends in a chateau in. Picardy. Now, what is a chateau? Well, uh, a chateau is a large French country house or a castle. Okay, you can see a picture there. Uh, it's a picture of some chateau in France. Okay, a chateau means a large French country house. Okay, so the narrator he decided to spend his hunting uh, season with his friend in chateau in a place called Picardy. All right, so. when you know let me tell you a bit about his friends what kind of friends he had now see his friends were very fond of practical jokes okay now what is the meaning of practical jokes uh, see practical uh, you know pra uh, you know practical jokes can be a lot of fun as long as they do not cause anyone a harm okay so a practical joke is such kind of jokes which you uh, crack on your friends but it should not be hurting it should only just be for the fun okay so and these his friends were very fond of such kind of practical Uh, jokes all right now uh, when he received uh, uh, you know picardy his friends you know when he uh, when he arrived in fact when he arrived at picardy his friends gave him a very princely reception okay now what did what did they do uh, in order to receive him his friends they sat you know they uh, they shot uh, they shot a gun in the air and each one of them went and embraced and hugged him and all those friend you know over friendliness they were showing at him and by seeing this uh, the you know the the narrator suspected something fishy okay he thought that some they might be planning or they might have planned something on me okay all right now not just that you know because as you know as i said uh, of course the narrator was a suspicious minded person but he, you know not because uh, he, he he could he, he is like that because maybe his friends were always uh, you know uh, throwing some practical jokes on him or cracking always cracking some kind of jokes on and like that so when his friends showed him over friendliness he thought to himself that these people must have something in preparation for him understood okay now then in the evening time it was evening and all of his friends were they were dining all right but during the entire evening you know everybody they were just uh, laughing you know every uh, you know they were laughing in a very exaggerated fashion okay now the narrator smelled a practical joke in the air as the dog smells the game you know now what you know by seeing this the narrator became very very watchful and at the same time very restless okay now whatever they were talking you know whatever they were talking he did not let a word or a meaning of a gesture escape him that means he was trying to read uh, you know every gestures that they were making or they were or the narrator was trying to take out the meaning of every word that was being you know that was being spoken in the conversation while having a dinner okay all right now for narrator everybody seemed to him you know for the for narrator everybody seemed like an object of suspicion Okay now not only not not just his friends he even looked at the servant who had come to serve food to them on the dining table you know he even looked at uh, uh, you know him then uh, he even looked at the servant at a very what looked very distrustfully okay all right now now what happens was that now uh, after they finished dinner okay after they finished dinner what happened uh, it was time uh, for them to go to sleep okay so 
When it was time for them to go to sleep, the narrator decided to go to sleep as well to, uh, at the arrangement that they had made for him. So there was some uh, some arrangement was made for him in one bedroom. So he was supposed to go there and sleep. All right. But here also the entire household, you know, the the whole household came to escort him towards the room where some arrangement was made for him to sleep. Okay. All right, and then the entire house came there uh, to say him good night. Okay, and then they went saying good night. Now looking at this also, what happened? The narrator thought, why are these people so concerned about me this time? Okay, but anyways, he was holding a candle in his hand. He entered his bedroom now. Okay, so when he entered the apartment or a bedroom, first of all, what did he do? He shut the door. Okay. After shutting the door for some time, for for a for a while, he stood there without moving. You know, without moving a single step, he first of all, uh, you know, in front of the door there, he just stood holding a wax candle in his hand. Okay. Then after that, what did he do? But you know, at the meantime, he was uh, uh, he was just uh, you know trying to uh, see inside the room. You know, he was just trying to see inside the room if he could find anything suspicious, okay? And at the same time, he could also hear the laughter and whispering in the corridor. Understood? And uh, he, he thought for sure that the, those uh, laughter and whispering must be of my friends who must be thinking that uh, I have entered the room and maybe something, you know, maybe the jokes that they have prepared on him might be successful and all. So the, these people must be thinking all those things outside the narrator thought. Okay. So what did he do? He gave a glance. That means he looked up in the ceiling. He looked up, uh, you know, he looked around the walls, at the furnitures, okay, at the hangings. Understood. And also on the floor, he, every way he looked because, uh, you know, he, without any doubt, he knew that his friends must have planned something for him. Okay. So he looked everywhere. Understood. Now, he saw, he saw nothing to justify his suspicion. He looked over everything. Okay. He inspected everything, but he could find nothing to justify his suspicion. All right. But he could still hear some people moving outside the door and he, he sure, surely, you know, he knew or he doubted, his doubt was so strong that he was almost sure that somebody must be trying to look through the keyhole and see whether their jokes had been successful or not. Okay, so all those things was coming on his mind. Okay, so now what did he do next? Okay, the next thing that came in, into his head, you know, the next idea that came into his head was that he was holding a wax candle. Then he thought that anytime this candle may get extinguished. So what did he do? He saw and then, you know, if the candle gets extinguished, then you will be left in the darkness and any, anything can happen to him. No, he thought that way anyways. So what did he do? He, he went there and on the table he could see a mantelpiece okay and it had a uh, you know a couple of candles so what did he do he, he lit all the wax candle that were placed there okay so that uh, so that the entire room would be lighted and and then he could see every movement that would go in the room all right now the next that he did was that uh, you know so the next that he did was after that what did he do uh, he still you know he looked around he still looked around and uh, you know see if he could see anything because now the room was uh, uh, you know quite brightly lit okay the room was quite uh, brightly lit and then he just looked around to see if he could he can see anything but he could discover nothing understood he could discover nothing he every steps that he was taking inside the room was very short steps because anything can happen so that way you know he was uh, taking so, some small small step and examining the entire room all right and then uh, but still he could find nothing okay he he examined the entire room but he could find nothing uh, uh, like what he had doubted all right so at last what did he do he made up his mind to go to bed and sleep okay now the bed was uh, you know and then he looked he came towards the bed to sleep but again he looked at the bed and he, he you know he found that bed also quite suspicious looking 
He understood. He found the bed also quite quite suspicious, and there were curtains hanging all over the bed. You know, curtains. He even tried to pull those curtains to see whether something is you know hidden there or not. But uh, he could find nothing. So they seemed quite what secure. All right. So he could not find anything there also. Now. Now you see. Then he said, "Okay, now it is fine. Now I will get in inside the bed." Then, uh, you know, uh, he was about to get inside the bed. Then again, suddenly he felt some kind of danger. Okay. Then he thought to himself. He said, "No, no, no. What if I get into the bed and perhaps I might receive a cold shower bath from the overhead, or perhaps the moment I stretch myself out, okay, I might find find myself sinking uh, under the floor with the mattress." Who knows? They might have planned something on the bed. There, at the moment I get inside the bed, the bed might sink. I might be on the floor, or maybe the moment I get inside the bed, you know, a cold water might be poured upon me. Who knows? Anything can happen. So he looked at the bed also quite what suspiciously. Okay. Now, what did he do? Now, slowly he said, "No, I better." what i'll better make some my own arrangement to sleep he thought like that way okay he did not uh, decide to sleep on the bed that had been laid there for him but he decided to what make his own arrangement okay for sleeping so first of all what did he do he pulled out the bed clothes you know bed sheets one by one he pulled out the bed sheets the bed clothes everything even then what did he do he even pulled out the mattress and he dragged all these objects into the middle of the room facing the entrance He understood. He pulled everything. Now the empty bedstead was lying there. He pulled out bed, all the mattresses, bedsheet, everything, and he made his sleeping arrangement in the middle of the room, facing the entrance. Entrance means the place where you know you enter. Uh, either you enter the room or exit the room. Okay. Now. After that, what happened? But uh, after that also, uh, you know, uh, he slipped into the bed. Okay, he decided to sleep. He slipped into his bed. He pulled out his blanket. But uh, but still, for you know, but still, at least for another one hour, the the narrator he remained awake. Okay, awake, and then uh, he was quite uh, you know. alert even at the slightest sound and even the you know some insects or you know the rats might make now no you know sound in the room even at the slightest noise he was uh, waking up like that okay all right now after sometimes after an hour or two passed you know everything seemed quiet in the chateau okay that means everybody now must have fallen asleep and thinking that he also fell faster sleep All right. Now, what happens next was that probably the narrator must have been in a deep sleep for a long time. Okay, but all of a sudden, what happened? The narrator was awakened with a start by the fall of a heavy body tumbling right on top of his own body. You understood? So he felt something very heavy falling upon him. You understood? He is inside his blanket. So suddenly he could feel something very heavy falling upon upon him. Okay, and at the same time, the narrator also received on his face, on his neck, on his chest. What did he receive? He received a burning liquid which made him utter a howl of pain. You understood? Okay. Now he has no idea what's happening. You understood? He, he he had no idea what had what had happened. Okay. Now what did he do? He quickly threw his blanket and he stretched out his hand to find out what was there. You understood? He tried to find out what was there, and he could uh, and he could feel some like you know some strange animal with a nose. Okay. When he when he stretched out his arm, he could feel some face, some nose, and some whiskers as if some strange animal had fallen upon. him all right now what did the narrator do the next now he quickly got up from that bed he was still in his night suit okay all right and he ran towards the corridor of course the door which uh, the door uh, the door of his room was open already it was open all right and he screamed so loud Okay now what had what had happened actually was that you know uh, it was already a broad daylight you understood already it was a broad daylight and he screamed such a loudly that he, you know the noise that 
the, 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 the noise of his screaming brought all his friend in the room where, where he was supposed to be okay now actually what had happened was that you know the improvised bed he had improvised his bed remember remember he had made a new sleeping arrangement in the middle of the uh, room facing the entrance what had happened you know he was sleeping there but it was already a broad daylight it was already a morning and a valet had come uh, you know had come to give him a morning bed tea along with some snacks all right so the valet entered the room because the you know the door was open the i mean uh, it was open and then he uh, entered the room when he entered the room inside it was dark so what happened he did not realize of course uh, of course he had uh, he, there was no doubt he can realize you know how can he because the bed is placed somewhere there it is the new arrangement that the author had made or the narrator had made in the middle of the in uh, middle of the room uh, so the moment the valet entered the room he tripped over the author he, does, he also doesn't know what's happening okay all right so so poor uh, you know the dismayed valet while you know bringing the narrator the morning cup of tea actually the valet had tripped over this obstacle in the middle of the floor what was the obstacle obstacle was the narrator who was sleeping there with his blanket covered him all completely covered okay so and it was dark there so the valet also could not see so he had tripped over this obstacle the obstacle here is the narrator who is sleeping there in the middle of the floor okay and fallen on his stomach the valet fell on the on top of the stomach of the narrator and he spilled and you know he spilled uh, everything there you know the breakfast the tea that he had brought uh, was all over his face okay it was all over his face now what had happened you know what had happened was that in the end what happened the narrator who was over careful you know he was over careful and at the same time very very suspicious minded person he was very suspicious minded person so the the end what to him was very very dreadful you understood it was very dreadful he had taken a lot of precautions you know he had taken to close the shutter and he had gone to sleep in the middle of the room all these things you know he had done so he was too much cautious and he he was of course very very what suspicious minded person so the end was very dreadful for him uh, you know uh, because you know in the end because of his you know uh, over doubtfulness uh, you know he nobody had cracked a joke upon him but he himself what happened he himself the narrator had invited the joke upon himself he himself uh, invited a joke upon him and became the joke of the day okay now ultimately he kept his head scratching and thinking about all these things why because it was it was not not his friend not what uh, any one of his friend but it was he himself who had invited that joke upon him anyways at the end you know uh, what can they do they all laughed you know they all laughed talking about that incidents the that day okay well so this is the end of the story uh, that is the uncomfortable bye bye agide mahabasa right that's all for today